it's important to know what games are good for. You know, they're not a silver bullet. If you're asking a question like, what kind of game would keep kids in school? You might look at sports, like football, or chess club, right? So I think that all kinds of games in different contexts can be social impact. It doesn't have to be designed just for that. Games themselves aren't going to contain all the learning, but they can provide players with a disposition for future learning about the topic. So you can kind of get a feel for the topic, and then you go and you find out more. Oftentimes, you'll have far more people talking about your game than have actually played it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you know, um, one of the earlier kind of games for change, Darfur is Dying, is a game that I don't think a lot of people played, but the fact that there was a game about Darfur really raised awareness around the issue. So it's going it, to, it, it really depends on what you're measuring. Just yeah. talking about these kinds of games more will give them that much more of an audience and that much more power. So just, you know, playing them and, and not discrediting them, games as a medium, so easily. I mean, every, I feel like every week I see a headline that starts with, can games do X? Can <laughs> games change the world? It's like, yes, yes, they can like change the way we think about things. The games are more than just like stories that you press buttons to change. They're really systems, right? You have to learn how systems dynamics work. Because what you're doing is you're putting different objects with different behaviors and relationships in a space, and as a player, you're pushing those around. Ultimately, the biggest problems that face us in the world are systemic, right? You can't isolate one thing from another because you know, the economic system drives the environmental you know, uh, issues that we're facing and, and other things. So I do think that learning to make games and learning how to play them well is also about learning about systems and how they work. And so part of that is not just like what the game is about, but just learning about games and learning about how games are a cultural form of sy systems thinking and systems understanding. There are a bunch of people who dismiss games as kind of frivolous, and those are the people who are sort of saying, well, you know, what's this game going to do for me? Uh, but the other side of game and play that we understand is enjoyment, and so we certainly wouldn't want people to think they shouldn't enjoy their work or enjoy their games. So when we're framing things as games sometimes, if you, if you view them as a sort of enjoyable experience, or at least an experience that helps you reach a flow state or get fully engaged, You've got an opportunity to sort of capture people's thoughts or encourage them towards empathy. In making non-digital games um, that are just rule sets, right, that you just read the rules, like let's imagine it's hopscotch, right? It tells you how to draw your hopscotch grid and different games you can play with your hopscotch grid. Um, you know, those kinds of games, what I love about them is that it lets players actually reinterpret or remix the rules too. So there's something to me about like giving out rules of, for new games, new sports, whatever they might be, and then letting players actually uh, learn about how the system works by making changes to it, you know. I bet everybody here has certain house rules for Monopoly or whatever games you might play. <laughs> you have to ask yourself what purpose you're pursuing. So if these are art gestures, we don't often say, okay, does Picasso have a, you know, a pre and post test about how people responded to the art? Um, it sounds sort of absurd, but games sit in this strange space between the two. There's certainly institutions that are creating it with a very clear sort of, we want everybody to consume 30% less water after playing this game. Uh, but there are also lots of gestures in this space that have to do with just, they're experiential and that's all they exist as. Being able to just play, being able to just goof off, waste time, do something completely unproductive is one of the best ways for us to remember that we're human and not everything can be reduced to capital. And I do think that the frivolousness, the inconsequentialness of games is where their power is.